Do you ever feel stuck, like you're living your life on autopilot? Are you ready to shift into high gear and reach the success you so richly deserve? Welcome to the Play Big Movement podcast. I am your host, Sharon Lecter, entrepreneur, business strategist, and best-selling author. Playing big is not about settling for good enough or being comfortable. It is about reaching your highest potential and achieving your greatest success. Join me in my Play Big Movement as I interview top experts in business, money, and entrepreneurship, all ready to serve you and to help you play big, be number one in your field, live your legacy, and create maximum impact. Welcome to this segment of the Play Big Movement podcast with Sharon Lecter. I'm delighted today to have an old friend, well, a young old friend, an old friend. <laughs> We've known each other for a few years. Yeah. Um, Carrie, Carrie, I didn't mean to call you old. Welcome, Ka Carrie Conley. Oh, you know what? I'm feeling that my age, though, Sharon. <laughs> <laughs> a brand new grandmother for the second time. Correct. So it's exciting. I'm so delighted for you and for Thank your you. incredible daughter. Yeah. And so, you know, things, life does keep moving forward, but from, from day one, you have been so dedicated to being focused on your vision and helping mm -hmm. other people do it. You know, the vision matters speaker is, is your tagline, but you're so much more than that because you also care so much about suicide prevention and young people finding their voice. Right. And I'm just so delighted to have you here today. You have a brand new podcast. But let's start, let's remind our audience a little bit about Little Carrie and how you got started. <laughs> um, well, the story goes that, you know, when I was in my late 20s, which again was a very long time ago, uh, I was doing what we were taught to do, which was, you know, get the nine to five gig and just work your way up the, the ladder, so to speak. Um, and this was the late 80s, Sharon, and that's what everybody was doing and um, doing it very successfully. And I was changing jobs every two years because I just couldn't. I couldn't figure out why I just didn't like the mold. Um, and then I had a mentor enter my life at that point saying, you know, you can create your life to look like however you want. You just have to get really clear on what that is. And so she encouraged me to really sit down in a very quiet space. And I took a day off of work and with a legal pad of paper, I wrote out in great detail what I wanted my life to look like, what kind of wife I wanted to be, what kind of mother I wanted to be. Um, I knew that I wanted to have my own business and work from home. I just didn't know what that was. So I wrote a lot of ideas down. Um, but out of my head for the first time ever in my life on that piece of paper, on the last line, I wrote that, that I believed that I was called to, to teach other people how to write their vision and how to goal set and get unstuck. So, so the, the journey began, right? I kind of manifested my first business while my kids were at home. I was in the network marketing industry. And so I led a lot of people um, on my team. You, you got to the top rank in your company, I believe. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, you know, earned all the trips, the car, all the things. I had an awesome team of people. But I knew, Sharon, that if I didn't teach them how to write their vision on paper, they were going to quit. Because it's just too easy to quit when you're just kind of drifting through it all, right? Um, so that led me to 10 years ago, becoming an official Vision Matter speaker. Um, I was a business coach for many, many years, mostly for female entrepreneurs. Uh, and now I'm, I get hired to come and speak at you know, conferences, small businesses, uh, things like that. Um, I am, am on a mission, as you mentioned, unfortunately, through this journey over the past eight years. I've lost both my husband and my son to suicide three years apart. And so that's when I knew that this was way beyond me business coaching. This now has become really my mission. Yeah, like, it's just, it's, it's really become an epidemic. Is yeah. many, most of you know, I also lost my son to suicide 10 years ago. Sure. So Carrie and I have that additional bond besides being friends and for a long time. But uh, so, Carrie, tell me a little bit about you've got you just launched a new podcast and it looks like it's just going great guns. Tell us a little bit about that. Now, you know, I this time last year, I started thinking, OK, what is it that I'm not doing on a bigger level to reach more voices faster? And I reached out to you and several other of my mentors. And I kind of put a pause on the things that I had been doing, like the coaching, so I could figure out what was next. And in one way or another, 
all of them said to me, you need to get on bigger platforms. And uh, I have a team in Arizona that kept, they'd been talking to me for years about having this podcast. I just didn't feel like the timing was right. And all of a sudden I called them last summer and I said, okay, I think it's time. Uh, so the podcast is called Moving Through and Beyond. I'm so honored that you were my very second guest um, <laughs> to help me launch it. And what I do is I bring people on that um, are, are they're thriving in life right now, but they've been through some sort of adversity in their life. Not necessarily the one like you and I have been through. Um, I've had people come on and talk about how they've uh, been through serious illness, been through bad divorces, losing a lot of money. Uh, they talk about a lot of different things. Um, and they're pretty transparent about what they what were through. But the biggest thing I get them to share is what helped them get through it. Because so many people right now are struggling with, uh, silently, a lot of people are struggling with some sort of adversity going on in their life and not feeling like they can relate to anybody else or that uh, nobody could really understand what they're going through. Um, so I get these people to lovingly open up about it and talk about what helped them. And I think it's so important. I mean, when I first started my speaking career, you weren't supposed to show vulnerability from stage. You were supposed to be the expert. And so everything you said was like the law. You were supposed to show vulnerability. I couldn't even say the word back then. And um, as as I moved forward, my my agent said, Sharon, you need to be more vulnerable. And I went, what? Yeah. And, yeah. you know, it's really true. People are looking for authenticity. They want to relate. They want to know, like, and trust you. And they can only do that if they know the real you. And right. I think um, you've been better at speaking out about suicide than I have. I'm still, you know, that's a, little, a bit of a hurdle for me. But um, definitely, I think it's important to really highlight the fact that um, out of adversity, you can't go back and change it, but you can learn from it. You can find the what toughens you up so right. that the next time, or you can also then turn it into your message and help other people. Right. And you've done that. You've done that in a really big way. So yeah. I really want to applaud what your efforts are. Yeah. So talk to us about the things that, you know, how can people find you? What are the, how can they work with you? Mm -hmm. So uh, my website is the fastest way. Uh, when you go there, you have the opportunity to sign up for my weekly newsletter that I send out. And um, I have a course on there that I recorded in front of a live audience that you can download. It's called Vision is Victory. And it's literally a, a one day workshop uh, where I walk people through why you need to have this written vision, how to write it like you've never written it before, where you're getting stuck, right? And then how to break down a big vision into bite-sized actionable goals. So um, it's my signature course. I've done it with thousands of people. Uh, so it's super helpful. And then you can always reach out to me to ask me a little bit more about um, the trainings that I do when I'm brought in for conferences and conventions. And so uh, the name of your website? Yep, carryconley.com. And then, you know, I think this is kind of a off-the-cuff question that just came into my little brain. Uh -oh. Yeah. So <laughs> how do you think vision work has changed or the importance of it as it relates to what we've been through in the world the last few years with COVID and mm -hmm. political unrest and fear? Yeah. Um, do, do you think that's changed or has impacted the importance of it? More times than not, before COVID and after COVID, when I would be in front of an audience or networking, I would ask people, do you feel like you have a, a really clear vision for your life? And most people will look at me and tell me, yeah, I think I do. But if I ask them, can you show me on paper, written, detailed in every area of your life with some targeted dates on things? 99% of the time they tell me absolutely no. And I don't think that's changed at all. I think that's still the same. I will tell you though, um, I've been hearing a lot more people talk about vision, like Mel Robbins, for example, um, who I'm a huge fan of. Um, she has a thing on Audible right now called Reinvent Yourself. And she talks about how you have to take a pause and rewrite your vision. And something she said really struck me, Sharon. It really helped me give me some peace that a lot of times I think people back away from writing the vision because they feel like what they're writing is the vision for the rest of their life. 
And what we've now come to know, especially after COVID, is their seasons. So I just really want people to not be afraid about writing their vision, thinking that you're writing it like, you know, uh, the Ten Commandments, right? It's written in stone and that's it. Because I'm finding, especially the older I get, that when I write my vision, I write it for about three years out, but I also tweak it because I'm in a different season now. Right. right. So I really want people to know that and not be afraid of it. Yeah, I think um, in my experience, what I see, and it may, and it's for me too, the, the three years, the last three years have changed um, priorities, have changed yeah. uh, what, what is important to people, I think. And yeah. certainly for me, it's been a realization. And I yeah. think it's, you know, it's an important thing. You, you do an exercise where you talk about, you know, the next year, the next three years. And I think it's the part of that exercise that I think is outstanding is, you know, put down the ages of your children and right. your spouse and people are close to you and what they're going to be in three years. And it kind of is a, a, a realization that time flies and you got to yeah. make the most of every single day. Right. Exactly. Which is the biggest reason I moved, as you know, to Oklahoma from Scottsdale, Arizona, which I absolutely love. <laughs> I made that choice so that I could be, because I knew the time was fast. Mm -hmm. um, my grandson, my first grandson is going to be three here pretty soon. And I feel like he was just born yesterday, but because I made that decision to make that a priority and move here, um, we have a really great relationship built already. And I'm really happy about that. That's um, great. Yeah. So it's just, you know, you talk about, um, so I've been rereading two of your books, Sharon, um, Think and Grow Rich for Women and Exit Rich. And, you know, we go back to remembering how we have to have that definite of purpose in our life, definiteness of purpose. Um, and that's really resonating with me a lot, too, as I'm, I'm doing my own revision work and reinventing and looking at this season of my life, just getting really definite, um, especially because of the age I'm getting to. You know? It's like right here. <laughs> You're a baby. You're a baby. I know. I hear that. But, you know, man, turning 60, 60 last year was a biggie for me. And the fact that I'm now only a couple of months away from 61, I'm thinking, okay, now I'm in my 60s. This is like moving fast. Um, so and you're, yeah. in peak, you're in the peak of your mental capacity. I, that's, I found a survey and it's like, I've just been hanging on to it with your life because it talks about you're at your mental capacity between 50 and 90. So you're right in the middle of it. You're doing good. Okay, well, that's good to know because there are days I feel like I'm losing my mind. But um, yeah, I think it's just, I, I really just, you know, the reason I'm more passionate about vision now than more than ever, as you know, as we've talked about briefly here, that, you know, suicide, depression, anxiety, the numbers are off the charts and the ages are dropping. There's now research that we're into looking at, you know, five to eight year olds that are taking their lives, contemplating suicide. I mean, this is just crazy. Um, so I just really feel called every day to do what I do. Um, and I've, because I've stepped into that, I've manifested or it's aligned that I'm now all of a sudden aligning with all these other people who have already created platforms for things, how they're going into schools and teaching vision and purpose to the kids. It's awesome. That's yeah, fantastic. I love that. Yeah. I think, you know, when, when we talk about certainly the financial side of things that I'm also very interested in for kids right. is the, uh, a, a recent survey came out showing that millennials and Gen, Gen, Gen Zers are highly frustrated about money and scared about 81, 82%. And that mm. was a, that was a very shift, huge shift in financial mindsets because right. typically at that age there was no financial worry and it, it tells you that you know there, there is so much pulling people in so many different directions yeah both, both socially because i think it's because social media and financially but i think it's really important when you have young people in your life to provide that stability to provide that opportunity for them to have a vision because we live in a world where people are pro they're either reactive or proactive and I'm seeing a shift to a lot of reactive people. And it's, I don't think that's good. I think people need to be in control of their own lives and know where they want to go so they can get there. If you don't right. know where you want to go, then you're a drifter. 
right? right. And so right. you're re reactive and I, people need to be more in control in the driver's seat of their life and be more proactive. Yeah, I thoroughly agree. And I talk a lot about drifting. Um, Outwitting the Devil is another one of my favorite books. Um, drifting is where we just really get ourselves into trouble. Um, especially again, because of social media. If you're not certain about who you are and where you're going and confident in that, man, the comparison thing can really just bring it down. So when you know, I, you made the comment that you work a lot with the uh, female entrepreneurs, what do you yeah. think is the number one thing that's preventing them from creating and living their vision? It's so funny. I just wrote a blog about this this morning, the unworthiness. I think overall, you know, they'll tell me a lot of things. So when I do my live workshops and I have them actually write their vision there, after they take about 45 minutes to write it, the next thing I start asking them is, so how are you feeling about what you just wrote? And, you know, there's positive words like, this was fun. I'm, I, I'm hopeful. I'm seeing a light. I'm, I'm seeing how it's going to give me some direction. But a lot of times it's words like, uh, um, I'm feeling very anxious about this right now. I'm feeling very overwhelmed. But I think the number one thing always in a workshop, especially with women, is I don't feel that I deserve this. And that's really sad. And what right? do you say? What What's your feedback to them? Well, there's so much behind that. And it's really asking a lot of questions to figure out where did they where do they feel that came from? At what point in their life, what traumatic thing happened to cause them? Usually it's some sort of traumatic event that has caused them to, for their, their worthiness to waver. Um, a lot of times it's what was role modeled for them. Um, it's just lies. You know, you and I know that this is just lies that they're being fed. Um, they're not listening to the right voice. Um, Cause God's yeah, voice. They, they don't have the right people around them. They have people trying to hold them back. So of people to encourage them and keep them going. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and it's important, and that's why I talk a lot about making sure that the people in your front row, which you've heard me do a lot and you've quoted me on, of making sure that those people that you're allowing the closest to you are the people that lift you up, believe in you when you don't believe in yourself, uh, don't let you quit, uh, you know, just really, really want to be your biggest champions. And that's, you know, some of the times you can sit back and people close to you are just taking up space. They're not really there to support you and you need to pay attention to that. That's when you're talking about moving them back in the audience or out the door. I love that. I absolutely love that exercise. Yep. So when we look at what's, what, what do you have on tap for the, for this next few months? What all are you doing? Um, speaking a lot. And I literally hit the road on Wednesday and go a couple places here, come back for a couple of days. But um I am speaking, I've been hired to go speak at a, a bank sales conference in Dallas. <laughs> um, I'm speaking at an event in Miami called the uh, Awaken Global Summit and speaking at uh, the Best Jew Expo coming in and up in LA, which will be huge. Three day event. I have four different workshops, time on the main stage, book signing, big booth, all the things. So, so there's a lot going on and I'm excited about it. That's great. I, I love that. It's going to be wonderful. And I'm happy to see you out there because you, every time you speak, you open people's eyes and impact them in a positive way. Yeah. So for all our listeners and viewers right now, what's your top piece of advice for them to be able to look forward, not back? So easy to say this, but hard to do. You've got to forget the past. It is what it is. You can't change it. I think so many people live in the past and just can't let something go. And I, I get this and I know you do too, Sharon, especially if it's, you've had a lot of loss in your life. Um, but at the end of the day, if you can't do anything about it, you're just like you just said, taking up space mentally and emotionally. So I really, the biggest reason I love people lo looking three years out is that's the forward motion. And you know, God willing, we will be three years older in three years and a lot changes. So I just want to give people that hope that you can look forward no matter what has happened in the past. That's right. And that, uh, you know, when I 
was in my level of depression after losing my son. I think I heard him in my ear say, get over mom. There's more for you to do. You're still, here for, you're still here for a reason. So that's my message to other people that no matter what stops you in your tracks, could have been a death like for Carrie and me, could have been an illness, financial setback, a divorce, right. um, but you're still here. You're still here and you're still here for a reason. And there's more for you to do. So, right. Right. Except the fact that whatever happened, you have a, it was a learning opportunity, something that uh, you can now help other people going through that. So right. turn it into a mission, much similar to what Carrie's done here, to help other people going through the same thing. So you're going to hang out with me for the private Facebook group. We're going to go a little deeper. And so those of you that are not members of that group, please join so you can hear the rest of, of Carrie's wisdom and know that we absolutely um, want you to have a fabulous day because you're fabulous. So thank you for being here for this segment of the Play We Move podcast. Thank you, Carrie, for thank being you. with me. Take care. Have a great Bye. day. Thank you for listening to this segment of the Play Big Movement podcast. Please subscribe to iTunes and leave us a review, as well as join us in other areas of social media, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn, at Sharon Lecter, and for Facebook, author Sharon Lecter. Thank you so much and have a fabulous day.